new metaphors emerging in the modern medium for the old universal truths that you've talked about, the old story? Well, uh, I think that the, uh, the Star Wars is, is, a, is a valid mythological perspective. And the problem of, is the machine and the state is a machine? Is the machine going to crush humanity or serve humanity? And humanity comes not from the machine, but from the heart. Luke, help me take this mask off. But you'll die. I think it was in the uh, Return of the Jedi when Skywalker unmasks his father. The father had been playing one of these machine roles, a state role. He was the uniform, you know? And the removal of that mask was an undeveloped man there. It was kind of a worm. By being executive of a system, one is not developing one's humanity. I think that uh, George Lucas really, really did a beautiful thing there. The idea of, ma of machine is the idea that we want the world to be made in our image and what we think the world ought to be. Well, the first time anybody made a tool, I mean, taking a, a stone and uh, chipping it so that you can handle it, that's the beginning of a machine. It's turning out of nature into your service. But then there comes a time when uh, it, it, it begins to dictate to you. I'm having a bit of this trouble with my computer. <laughs> Computer, actually. Computer? I just bought one a couple of months ago, and uh, I, I can't help thinking of it as having a personality there because it talks back and it, it behaves in a whimsical way and uh, all of that. So I'm, I'm personifying that, that machine. To me, that machine is uh, uh, almost alive. I could mythologize that darn thing. There was a wonderful story about, I think, President Eisenhower uh, when the computer was first being built. You remember that story? Eisenhower uh, went into a room full of computers, and um, he puts a question to the, these machines, is there a god? And they all start up, and there's all those lights flashing and wheels turning and things like that. And after about 10 minutes of that kind of thing, a voice comes forth, and the voice says, now there is. <laughs> well, I um, bought this wonderful machine, IBM machine, and it's, it's there. And I, I'm rather an authority on God, so I identified the God, and it seems to me an Old Testament God with a lot of rules and no mercy. <laughs> See, this thing up here, this consciousness thinks it's running the shop. It's a secondary organ. It's a secondary organ of a, of a total human being, and it must not put itself in control. It must submit and serve the humanity of the body. Join me, and I will complete your training. When it does put itself in control, you get this father, the man who's gone over to the intellectual side. I'll never join you! If you only knew the power of the dark side. He isn't thinking in, in, or living in terms of humanity. He's living in terms of a system. And this is the threat to our lives. We all face it. We all operate in our society in relation to a system. Now, is the system going to eat you up and re relieve you of your humanity? Or are you going to be able to use the system to human purposes? Would the hero with a thousand faces help us to answer that question? about how to change the system so that we are not serving it. I don't think it would help you to change the system, but it would help you to live in the system as a human being. By doing what? Well, like Luke Skywalker, not going over, but resisting its, its uh, impersonal claims. But I can hear someone out there in the audience saying, well, that's all well and good for the imagination of a George Lucas or for the scholarship of a Joseph Campbell, mm -hmm. but that doesn't, isn't what happens in my life. You bet it does. If the person doesn't listen to the demands of his own spiritual and, and heart life and uh, insists on a certain program, you're going to have a schizophrenic crack-up. The person has put himself off-center. 
he has aligned himself with a programmatic life, and it's not the one the body's uh, interested in at all. And the world's full of people who have, uh, who have stopped listening to themselves. In my own life, I've had many opportunities to commit myself to a system and to go with it and to obey its uh, requirements. My life has been that of a maverick. Uh, I would not submit. You really believe that the creative spirit ranges on its own out there beyond the boundaries? Yeah, I do. Something of the hero in that. I don't mean to suggest that you see yourself as a hero. No, I don't, but I see myself as a maverick. <laughs> <laughs> so perhaps the hero lurks in each one of us when we don't know it. Well, yes. I mean, our life evokes our character, and you find out more about yourself as you go on. And it's very nice to be able to put yourself in situations that will evoke your higher nature rather than your lower.